Hey gamers, I'm Joey. Welcome to Collider Games. No, I will not be Aladdin at your kid's birthday party. Instead, today I'm reviewing Detroit Become Human. So about a month ago, Collider Games got invited by PlayStation down to a Quantic Dream event where they showed off two hours of demo of this game. I was hooked. It was amazing. I loved every minute of that demo. I honestly, this is one of the kinds of games that I really love is this cinematic experience where there's not a lot of like, well, let's face it, there's not a lot of skill involved. You get to watch a 20 hour long movie and you can really get immersed in it without having to learn combos. It could just be because I'm a bad gamer, but honestly, I really love just getting engrossed in a story. This kind of game is perfect for that. So Quantic Dream, for those of you who don't know, in 2010 made a game called Heavy Rain, and that was critically acclaimed. This is a game that won BAFTAs. They also made Beyond Two Souls and... <laughs> Detroit is their first attempt at making a game specifically for this new console generation, and on the PS4 Pro, this is a beautiful game. This is beautiful. The game is set in the not too distant future where androids are the norm. They do the cooking, they do the cleaning, they do the road work, and sometimes they investigate crimes. You rotate play as three androids, Kara, Connor, and Marcus, and they each have their own specific roles to play in the future of androids. Personally, I love kind of finding what specifically each of these characters is going to be focused on and playing the game with that in mind. I played Kara one way, specifically having her focused on the goal of keeping Alice safe. Connor specifically focused on his mission to hunt down deviant androids. And I played Marcus as a revolutionary who has humanity to him, but that doesn't necessarily make him a good guy. And that's what I love about these kind of games is you can kind of pick exactly how you want to play it. And then you can play through the whole thing and go back and play it completely differently. And usually with choose your own adventure games, this is where we start to see the flaws in them. They say they have a bunch of replayability, but it's really, oh, now you have less people with you in the final battle because you didn't make as many friends. Oh, you made these two choices, but ultimately some big bad showed up and all your choices are kind of irrelevant. Kind of looking at you, Telltale. Detroit is not like that, however. The narrative has so many variants or deviants. The last three hours of the game are gonna be completely different depending on what choices you made. And I mean completely different for each character. I watched two playthroughs of this that were made with completely different choices. Not even the set pieces were the same. We were in completely different locations at the end of the game. Honestly, I could start spoiling things left and right because I probably wouldn't be spoiling your game. I'm not gonna though, because I like, I don't know, I think my game was pretty good and I want someone to play my game because I had fun with it. Now I'm not gonna spoil too much of the story, but Quantic Dream has talked a lot about what the character's motivations are. So we can talk about the fact that Marcus is going to end up leading a revolution for the androids. Kara is traveling with Alice, the daughter of Kara's once owner. And Connor is following his protocol. He is specifically designed to hunt down deviant androids, androids that are straying from their code that are breaking the rules of their programming. Honestly, Connor's a really interesting character here because he is more of a robot than the other two. The others show signs of humanity and really start to question their own existence. But Connor, at least in the beginning, does not do that. He is very straightforward. I had fun playing him that way the entire time. My version of Connor was a robot the entire time. And oh my God, it made it so much fun. But that's the best part. If you don't want to play Connor that way or you don't want to play any of the other characters the way I played them, you can play them completely differently and the game still works with it. This isn't like Fallout 3 where you kind of RP'd your own character because there was no voice and you could kind of do whatever you wanted. So you just made up a character that worked. This is characters that actually change with the decisions that you make. One of the things I had trouble with in the demo and persisted into the full game was some of the controls, including the camera controls. If you're used to fast paced games, this is not gonna be an easy switch because the characters move slowly. Oh my God, do they move slowly. And for the first time that you're walking through this beautiful vista, that makes a ton of sense. But when you end up going the wrong way and you wanna backtrack or you're playing a level again or something is a timed event and they're still walking as slow as they possibly can and bumping into things that are like two and a half feet away from them, they haven't even reached the hitbox, mm, it gets frustrating. If you play this game on easy mode, 
which with this kind of game, no judgment, you can totally play on easy mode because this is watching a movie. If you're playing it on easy mode, you're probably gonna have a couple controller inputs for quick time events. You're probably gonna have some X, some circle, and some square. Maybe they'll throw a triangle your way. You're also gonna have joystick input and maybe a little bumper input, but that goes up a whole lot more if you play in experienced mode. I played on experienced mode and they also threw in a, a wow, it's a tough word. Acceler accelerometer controls, which I don't know if you can turn that off. I really, really, really tried, but this, it's not fun. Those inputs are few and far between though, and they don't wreck the gameplay. Controller input is gonna be the least of your worries though, because this game is so gorgeous. You are gonna be so distracted by the visuals of this game, particularly if you are playing on PS4 Pro. I got a chance to play it on PS4 Pro on a 4K TV. Some of the scenes in a place called Jericho, absolutely gorgeous. And I am a lighting nerd. I like seeing lighting work the way it should in a game. And I'm not talking about like light blooms and God rays and things like that, but tiny little things about exposing a face that have been so hard to do in video games before because of compression and because of rendering low light things. This game does it so well. Also the way some of the action works, especially when you're playing as Marcus, they made a conscious effort to make a lot of that handheld. So following Marcus is like following an action film most of the time. Little bit of advice to anyone playing this game though, be sure to exit out to the main menu often. On the main menu, there is an Android named Chloe. She is the one that introduces you to the game. As while we're on the subject of graphics, she looks Perfect. She's rendered better than any of the other in-game characters. It's really almost scary that she's staring into your house as you're playing. I wonder if you made the right choices last time. Exit out to the main menu a couple times. That unnerving nature of looking at a real face starts to get even weirder as the game progresses. Yeah, the main menu actually starts to adapt as you play the game. It's kind of affected by your choices. I'm not entirely sure how much it is actually affected, but there are some random things that Chloe can say, and there are some random things that she will do later on as you've progressed through the game. Quantic Dream knew that this was gonna be an ambitious undertaking, and we're getting the game that they wanted to make, which is kind of like Blade Runner, AI, Black Mirror, and honestly, it gets dark. It gets really dark. The developers say that you should play your first time all the way through and stick to the decisions that you make no matter what happens. And I kinda did that. There are one or two decisions that I made. Either I screwed up the button and restarted and made that decision over again, or I completely misread what was being said on screen, restarted because of that. But honestly, I feel like I stayed true to the characters that I started with at the beginning, and I stayed true to what I wanted them to be. And I'm definitely gonna play another version where I completely change that. The best part is after every level, they show the branching tree of decisions and they show you how many things that you missed that you wanna go back and do. But you can play from any checkpoint, so you can go back and do those things right away if you want to, but don't. If you're playing on experience mode, definitely play through with your decisions because there are opportunities where the characters can die. You could lose one and maybe even two characters before the end of the game and just finish the game out with one character. I'll fully admit it. I died as Connor. I, I died. I died once, twice, a couple times. Yeah, I died. You know what they did? They replaced him with another Connor. And it's awesome. That's one of the crazy things about the Android designs is that they have a model number and within that model number, there's no variance in the face or how they look. So sometimes Androids are running into other Androids that look exactly like them. When you're playing as an Android who is gaining their humanity, gaining their identity, and they see someone who is basically a carbon copy of them, it's terrifying. The branching tree of decisions is not just like a five or six options. It is a long and involved branching tree of exactly what affects your game. And the best part is, once your friends play through, you can see the decisions they made and you can see the global standings of what everyone has done as far as their decisions. And I think one of the interesting things is gonna be within the first week of this game being out, seeing what the decisions are like for everyone that's playing through their first time. So far, I've taken a look at the global statistics, statistics, St statistics, and only people with advanced copies have played, so only game reviewers have played. And it's kind of obvious that we all play it pretty similarly. So I'm very excited to see what everyone does when the game is officially out 
and you guys can all start playing. I want to see choices I never thought were going to be made. I want to see people losing characters within the first three hours. I want to see people making decisions to burn buildings down. That's probably an option. I'm not sure. I'm really, really trying hard not to go into spoilers here. So what I'm going to do is be cryptic about some of my favorite moments. While it's not an action game, there is some gun foo. I got to punch a stripper. That was pretty awesome. Robo polar bear. Pirate theme park. Having a fight with yourself. One of the craziest things is that you are playing three different characters with three different motivations that are interacting in the same world at the same time. And sometimes those paths cross. Sometimes the game is gonna decide which you're playing as. Sometimes you have to decide which you're playing as. And sometimes you've gotta decide whose will wins out. Honestly, this is one of the first games I'm reviewing for Collider Games and it's setting the bar pretty high. So I'm gonna give it a 9.1254. It is honestly one of my favorite games of the year so far. I know God of War was amazing, and I know everyone's giving those 10 out of 10s, but this is definitely gonna be one of the nominees for game of the year. It might not win it, but I think it is a strong contender, and we're definitely gonna see some art direction accolades going its way. Maybe another BAFTA for Quantic Dream. Well, that's it. Detroit Become Human comes out May 25th. Thank you to PlayStation for sending us an advanced copy to play through and explore. Thank you to Quantic Dream for having us as guests and being able to talk to David Cage. You can take a look at that interview on the Collider Games channel. If you like these kind of reviews from Collider Games, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to hear more about my playthrough, what I experienced, and maybe get some spoilers, leave that in the comments because I would love to do another video about this because, oh my God, so much cool stuff happened. I, I really, I can't, I can't tell them about, I can't tell you. We've got some cool stuff in the works for you. Dorian and I went to go check out Black Ops 4 so you can check out our playthrough of the multiplayer on the channel as well. We got a bunch of amazing stuff planned for you around E3. Be sure to check it out, continue supporting the channel, and keep on gaming.